What is up, everybody? Dan at the Fireman here. If you're a brand new rider, keep paying attention because we're going to be talking about something very important, which is going to be this in-town riding close call. But that's not the exact thing I really want to focus on. I want to focus on this motorcycling cornering crash that happens to so many beginners out there because they're not truly paying attention to their skill level. But if something bad happens, make sure you grab yourself a moto rescue kit, which is on MotorcycleTrainingConcepts.com. It's on pre-order right now. They're probably sold out by the time you see this, but we might be getting more. Or let me know if that's what you want. Check it out. Links in the description. With that said, let's get to class and have a good time. All right, so we're moving through here. Feared the Gin 9, like a genie, right? <coughs> so, good braking. That person's a dumb dumb. But we see that all the time, right? Now, this I wouldn't do because that puts you in a, in a dangerous position, right? Puts you in a dangerous position. So, if you had a ram mount, they might have seen them. No, you mean what you mean is a rock form mount. He needs a rock form out using the link in the description for a discount. I got mine right here. All right, so we're going to get up to here, and we have this person applying the brakes, okay? This person's applying the brakes in a green light intersection. Now, it could be a bump. It could be a little kid laying down on the road. We don't know, all right? Either way, brakes means that they're doing something that is not going straight. They're not accelerating. They're not... Uh, doing anything, they're making a decision for some reason, they need to apply the brake. So this is why we need to maintain a good space cushion. So it looks like it's pretty good. Now what I would do, instead of being right here, right behind him, I would kind of be over here, right? One only. So that's where I would be. That way I can see super far and see what's up. That's what I would be doing. That way I can see if there's a little kid laying in the road or whatnot. So it looks like he's going to do a nice wide turn to the left. Um, a little bit late. Could have been a U-turn. Uh, but then he, maybe he saw in his mirror that there was a motorcyclist there and decided to change his mind and go straight. So here's the thing that I do like the best out of all of this is that with his right hand and with his situational awareness, he wasn't going super fast and he was applying the brakes in a straight line. So the handlebars are straight, right? So here's the thing, handlebars, okay, and the bike. So here's the bike, here's the handlebars, okay? Typically, when you do direct steering, they turn like this, they turn like this, they turn like this. Well, you see right now, it's like this and like this. Here's the bike, here's the handlebars. He applies the brakes and is able to kind of dive in like this. If it was turned like this, it would go like this. It would fall down. I do have a braking video on motorcycle training concepts. You should check it out. Uh, but thankfully, he did a good job with his progressive brake pressure. He didn't panic. He didn't honk the horn and then run into him because he wasn't getting himself out of there first. You got to do that first, okay? Nice little horn afterwards, not a big deal. Now, maintain your space cushion after the fact. I understand you're pissed and you don't know what this guy's going to do, but here's the thing. I'd rather watch a dumb dumb than have a dumb dumb behind me. So we're going to get up to here, and we're going to go ahead and go through here. Now, this is a dangerous area. You look at your line of sight to the left. Now, maybe you saw it prior to doing this, but look at Terrible line of sight. One's if he wants to park off to the right. You don't know. He's going to run you over. This is a crosswalk right here. You don't know if there's anybody in the park or in the crosswalk. It looks like Main Street, you know, a lot of people, a lot of pedestrians, got to be very careful. Also, people wanting to cross, maybe somebody wants to pull out. You're so focused on the car that was being dumb, you don't know if there's somebody else out there possibly getting you in danger. So we're going to be riding cornering. It's very dangerous for motorcyclists, especially those on cruisers, I guess. I don't know. I'm just saying that. Oh, a little loss of traction. Oh, well, pay attention up front, too. You, you got through one. And that's a high side. Uh, it does not look like he had full gear, so hopefully he's fine, but possibly some road rash, maybe some impacts to that right shoulder, maybe lost a little bit of his tattoo. Here's the thing. If you guys spent thousands of dollars on your tattoos, don't you want to keep them? Put some sunscreen on it, moisturize it, get it touched up every couple years, wear gear so you don't rip it off, all right? All right, so here's the thing. We're going to be riding around. We have a corner coming up. We have an amazing vision. There's absolutely no reason to get knee down and possibly get black belt, but we're going to be moving forward uh, because we should be going at a pro uh, an appropriate speed. We should be doing slow look, press, and roll. We should be slowing down before the turn. We should be looking through the turn, right? Nice looking through the turn. And then we should also press to initiate counter steering, which it looks like he's pressing to initiate counter steering. And then once we are getting our nose out of the situation, maybe maintaining a little bit with some maintaining throttle, okay? Because you will go slower if you're just, you know, maintaining the original throttle because we can talk more about traction later. But the thing is, once the nose is pointed out, you go ahead and roll on the throttle a little bit. So you should do slow, look, press, and roll, okay? You see how we start going wider? So let's go ahead and look at it again. 
Look at where we're at right now. So this is the moment we enter in. We're on we're in lane position two. This is where we also have to maintain a good line. Look how far we're starting to travel. We're starting to travel on the outside. Look how far we traveled on the outside. Do you think we might have been going a little too fast for the area? One of the things that you could possibly do is just roll out the throttle slightly and gently. You don't want to go like, hey, I'm going, oh, crap, I'm going wide, and then do that. That's too much uh, jerky inputs. You want to just kind of roll off the throttle a little bit, look through the turn, commit to it a little bit more, and then you should be fine. Now, this is one thing that I learned uh, recently. I've, lo I've learned for, for quite a while, but it was great talking to one only XRAM. And here's the thing is that you can practice a lot of this stuff out at a track. Okay, so counter steering is one thing in a parking lot, you know, demonstrating how cool you are knee down on a, on a very low bike. The thing is, in order to actually show those fundamental skills at high speed, you have to practice it out on a track and you can actually get some good coaching doing that. So this right here is exactly why you should be going to a track. But we're going to go ahead and do this. Got a little loss of traction on that spot. You know, we're, whoop, got a little rear tire slippage. And that should tell you we should be paying attention, okay? So we should take that as an omen of something could be happening bad. Going a little too fast. So he's going to pull in the clutch. And I don't know if he's downshifting. I don't know if he's looking at his buddy right here. We don't know. We don't know. Here's the thing, though. He held in the clutch. And now when we look up, guess what? The turn is still turning. We're not. We're starting to go wide. And now look at all the gravel we're going to hit. So we're going to lose traction. There's that rear tire sliding out because the rear tire is still spinning, right? We lost some traction. If we fell down to our left, that would have been a low side. But now it's going to gain traction. You see how it's back and forth, back and forth. Well, guess what? We're going to gain traction right now. Let's go ahead and slow speed it. Gain traction. Oh, no. There's that high side. Very, very dangerous. It's a Honda Shadow, so I can't make fun of Harleys on this one. Not massive amount of gear, okay? So we're going to go, and we're going to get launched. So all that momentum is thrown out that way, and we hit the right side. We, hit, we, got, we got white lights. We got, whew, we got knocked out. We don't know. Hopefully he's doing fine, but that impact with no gear is going to be on that right shoulder, left hip, right hip. He's going to start tumbling, his hands, arms, everything, tattoos ripped off. Hopefully he's got a full face helmet. If not, hopefully his face is doing fine because he probably has one on his head. Therefore, he had the camera. But we're going to go ahead and start tumbling. We start getting hurt, start getting hurt. Hopefully he's doing fine. All of that leading up to it needs to be practiced ahead of time so that this doesn't happen. We also need to navigate these types of things. We need to understand corners are dangerous, just like intersections. Riding a motorcycle takes skill. You can't just hop on one and call it a day. Whew. Guys, if you like this kind of stuff, we do this every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time live. So make sure you check that out. But if you want to check out some other things like this video right here, or this video right here, please do so. It supports the channel. Click that like button, by the way. Check into class. Anyways. I'll be seeing you around.